Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Punting in Popper, the show where I do my best to not absolutely punt and stumble my way through some popper games here on MTGO. I am your host Gord, and without further ado, let's get into the deck list, and we have a very exciting uh, pseudo combo deck here for you guys today. Uh, we are playing Rakdos Reanimator. So, the whole goal of this deck is to quickly reanimate a uh, Annihilating Eldrazi uh, from our graveyard. <laughs> so, uh, the Eldrazi we're playing are the Ulamog's Crusher and the Hand of Emrakul. So, if we can get these guys down real early, turn 2, turn 3, uh, we can put our opponent into a position where they really can't come back from it. So, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit here. Let's start, as we usually do, with the mana base. So, first up, we're going to play one ash barons just uh for some basic land cycling make sure we can uh, fix our mana playing four copies of bloodfell caves that's our rakdos duel enters tapped gains us a life uh one copy of bajuka bog uh just to exile target opponent's graveyard acts as a black source uh pretty reasonable in the deck and then other than that we're running uh, a suite of mountains and a suite of swamps so that's the mana base Next up, in the one-drop slot, we are playing three copies of Duress. Uh, we get to take a look at a target opponent's hand. We can choose a non-creature, non-land from it, and that player has to discard it. So this is just to help us protect our combo, uh, keep us safe from counter spells, etc. Uh, playing Faithless Looting, one mana to draw two cards, then discard two cards. And we can flash this back from the graveyard for two and a red. So this is the best way in the format to uh, fill up our graveyard quickly. Uh, then we have four copies of Insolent Neonate. So this is a one mana, one one vampire with menace, and we can discard a card, sacrifice the Neonate, and then we can draw a card. So another way to fill the graveyard and uh, refill our hand, uh, just kind of on the board, add some pressure and such. So we are going to play two copies of Cast Down here in the uh, in the main board. So this is just destroy target non-legendary creature. So hits most creatures in the format. I believe there's only uh, currently two legendaries in the format, and they don't see a whole lot of play. So this is strictly better than Doomblade. So if you are playing Doomblades in your list, uh, I would highly recommend uh, upgrading Cast Down. It's just strictly better. Um, we have Exhume. Now, this is our reanimation spell. So, for two mana, it is a sorcery. Each player puts a creature card from their graveyard onto the battlefield. So, this does affect our opponents. That is the downside. So, we want to try to Exhume before opponent has anything in their graveyard, before we've killed anything. Uh, the Bajuka Bog can help out with that, though, exiling our opponent's yards so that uh, they have no targets. We have an uh, another couple ways to empty their graveyard as well. But So, Exhume is the big spell we need to, uh, to act as our reanimation piece. Uh, we're playing three copies of Shred Memory, and this is actually a very good card in the deck. So for two mana, it is an instant. We can exile up to four target cards from a single graveyard. So we can use this to exile any creatures or any other uh, problem cards in opponent's graveyard. But it also has Transmute for one colorless and two black. And what that means is we can Transmute as a sorcery by paying this cost, and we can go search our deck and tutor up a, a spell with the same CMC. So we can use this to find our exhumes if we, if we don't have one in hand or we can use it to find any of our other two drops so removal or discard like that so yeah shred memory comes in play quite a bit it's a very good card in the deck uh next up two copies of cathartic reunion uh, as an additional cost we have to discard two cards and then we get to draw three cards so this helps us get our threats in the yard and refills our hand uh, tormenting voice very similar uh, but this time we only discard one card and draw two so same idea same mana cost just uh, a little bit of a different uh, additional cost on there and then we have dragon's breath now this is an interesting one this is what can really help us uh, fire off real quick um, so for two mana enchant creature enchant creature has haste and we can pay a red to give fire breathing so enchanted creature gets plus one plus plus oh until end of turn but what's really interesting is if a card entered the battlefield so a creature enter the battlefield from our graveyard, we can attach this to that creature for free. We do not have to pay the mana cost if this is already in the graveyard as well. So if we reanimate one of our one of our uh, Eldrazi's over here, we can just attach Dragon Breath to it for free, and uh, then it'll get to attack the turn it comes out. So that can do a lot of damage for us. Over in the three drop slot here, we have four copies of Stinkweed Imp. So we can get this in the yard. Uh, if we can do that, we can dredge it five, so we can uh, mill five cards, uh, fill up our yard, hopefully hit one of our uh, 
our big beaters in the deck. And um, if we have to just uh, hard cast it, it is a great block. It blocks Delvers, uh, other flying threats, and it has pseudo death touch, so it can really protect us. So very good card to have in the deck. I'm running two Simeon Spirit Guides. So this is a three mana 2-2 two, two Ape Spirit, but uh, we're not going to cast it because uh, this is a, a bit of a combo enabler. Uh, we can exile the, the Spirit Guide from our hand and we can just add red mana. So if we need an extra mana to go off on, on a turn, we do have the, the option of some fast mana right there. Now we are going to run two copies of Gurmag Angler just as an additional threat. Uh, we can double away our yard and just pay a black for this. So our yard's going to be pretty full. So just having Angler as another threat is is pretty good. It dodges a lot of removal in the format and it can it can block a lot of things. So worth keeping in mind. Now on to our Eldrazi's. So first up we have four copies of Ulamog's Crusher. So this is an eight mana eight eight. But we're not going to pay 8 for it. We are going to try to exhume it from our graveyard. It does have Annihilator 2. So Annihilator 2 says when this creature attacks, target opponent has to sacrifice 2 permanents. So this very early, if our opponent only has land and a creature, 2 lands and a creature, this really sets them back as they'll have to sacrifice uh, pretty much their entire board. So you can see a, a turn where we turn one Faithless Looting, discard Crusher and uh, Dragon Breath, get those in the yard, next turn Exume, then we have a Hasty Crusher turn two, uh, Exile's opponent's board. <laughs> so pretty darn good. And then we also have a Hand of Emrakul over here. This is a 9 mana 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, we may sacrifice four Eldrazi spawn rather than pay its mana cost, but we don't play any Eldrazi spawn in the deck, so... We're just going to try to reanimate. Just another uh, backup reanimate uh, target. And this one only has Annihilator 1, so the, the goal is to hit uh, Ulamog's Crusher, but we're, we're, we have Hand of Emrakul should we need it. So that's the main deck. Let's go ahead and take a quick peek over here at the sideboard. We have two wrench mines. Uh, target player discards two cards unless they discard an artifact card. So we can target ourselves if we need to um, discard some extra cards. But mostly that's going to be for our opponents to uh, try to disrupt their hand. A couple extra cast downs should we need some more removal for the, uh, for the matchup. We're playing two Blazing Volleys. Uh, this is one mana, and it deals one damage to each creature our opponents control. So this is good against uh, White Weenie decks. Um, Elves and the such, and we're also playing one Electricery. Uh, it, it does essentially the same thing for for two mana though, so kind of a redundant effect there. Uh, we're gonna play three Red Elemental Blasts for the blue matchup, so this is really good for protecting our combo, uh, messing around with blue decks. Uh, we got a nice uh, downshift from Double Masters here in a Braid. Uh, two mana, and we can choose either to deal three damage to target creatures, so we can use the removal spell, or we can destroy target artifact if we need to uh, hate on. Uh, a graveyard hating artifact or even like affinity anything like that and then we're gonna run two relics um just great graveyard hate in the format and if we need to uh you know hate on opponent's graveyard to do our exhume just nice to have some of those redundant effects so yeah that's the sideboard and the main deck and that is rakdos reanimator trying to get some crushers out so let's uh get into some games here all right, punting in Popper with some Rakdos Reanimator, and uh, this hand looks okay. Uh, we can turn one Faithless Looting. We are on the draw, uh, but we can turn one Faithless Looting, um, hopefully get one of our threats in the graveyard. We already have two Exhumes in hand. If we don't hit what we're looking for, we can throw a Stinkweed in the graveyard off the Looting, uh, and then we have a Tormenting Voice as a redraw. So yeah, hopefully we can find something. Let's keep this. One plays an Ancient Den, okay. And Thraven Inspector, so maybe this is Bully. We have Shred Memory, so let's go ahead, play Mountain. That's Faithless Looting. Uh, okay, we don't hit any of our big threats here, so let's discard Stinkweed Imp. And let's go with... Um, <laughs> let's do the Neonate. Last turn. Uh, okay, opponent plays Glintock. Bouncing the Clue, okay, interesting. Oh, and Boros Garrison, okay, makes sense. We'll take one from Thraven Inspector. Down to 19. Okay, we will mill five to Stinkweed in. And we hit a Crusher, so that's good. Let's play Swamp. Let's Exhume. Grab Ulamog's Crusher. 
All right, turn two crusher. We'll pass. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> unless they have journey main deck, I don't know. I don't know if they have much that deals with this. So I guess we'll see. They can get over our heads with the glint hawk. And plays ancient den. Golden egg for a redraw. Okay, contact with glint hawk. All right, we'll take two. We're down to 17. We untap. We will get greedy. And mill. And we hit another crusher, so that's actually great. Um, okay, let's go to combat. Yeah, we get in with our crusher. Annihilator 2 on the stack. Sacks Golden Egg and Thraven Inspector. All right. And then we will cast... They will get their Thraven Inspector back. But we're getting a better creature. They will get a redraw out of the clue token they're going to make. So, I mean, that's worth considering here. Um, we don't have enough mana, mana to shred memory and do that. So, But, I mean, Annihilator 4 next turn is uh, pretty reasonable. And we're presenting lethal if they can't block. Opponent does have a journey to nowhere. Okay, that's fair. It's the tapped crusher, okay. No tax on the opponent. And they pass the turn, okay. We're just gonna draw this time. We hit a mountain, which is pretty reasonable. We'll play our mountain. Let's tormenting voice. Discarding stinky imp. Go up a couple more cards. Bloodfell Caves and Spirit Guide. So we have an extra mana here. Um, I think we just get in with the Crusher. Annihilator on the stack. Pwn stacks the Thraben Inspector and the Clue Token. No blocks. Pwn goes to four. Okay. We'll pass the turn. I don't think we want to commit too much more to the board here. And some golden egg, okay. So they do keep getting to uh, get back resources. Or, yeah, to permanence of sacrifice, that is, to Annihilator. So they're doing fine that way, that's for sure. Opponent might be struggling on mana, though. Another Glint Hawk, so they have to bounce an artifact, yeah, okay. Picks up their Ancient Den to replay it, makes sense. And gets in for two, yep. We'll go to 15. All right, we untap, we will draw. Shred memory, not quite. Let's Faithless Looting. We'll draw Exhum, we'll draw Swamp, okay. Let's discard Bloodfell Caves and a Stinkweed Imp, I think. Yeah, stink we did. Play swamp. Uh, there's really nothing to get back from our graveyard right now. No point using an exhum. We have four mana available to us. Um, let's go to combat. Attack with the crusher. They have to block. Um, we maybe wanted to hold that Stink Imp to, uh, to draw it, or to play it out this turn, but, alright. So they block, they sack the Glint Hawk, and their Golden Egg, okay. So, opponent's got a reasonably empty board here. Uh, I think we just passed the turn. Alright, we got there, sweet, yeah. <laughs> so, opponent's turn six, so still pretty quick, yeah, nice, let's go to sideboards. Alright, so after sideboards, we're going to go up three of braids. Uh, this hits just about everything they play in their, their deck, and it can destroy their artifacts, which includes their lands, <laughs> which uh, is nice when we're, when we're playing an Annihilator deck. So uh, we're going to go down a Stinkweed Imp, because we seem to have no problem finding them uh, a Shred Memory, uh, because we do hit Exhumes often enough, so I, I mean, I'm playing those odds. And then one Insulin Neonate, it's just uh, kind of smaller smaller threat in this matchup. So yeah, let's, let's uh, try it like that, run it back. Alright, so this hand is pretty medium. We don't have a black source. Uh, we do have a braid. We do have a neonate. Uh, but, 
I don't know if it's uh, if it's doable. Well, a braid is protection in this case, or slowing our opponent down. This gets Crusher in the graveyard. We can find a black source of the Ash Barons. Ah, uh, okay, we'll keep it. Opponent did mulligan, so we'll use that to our advantage. Hopefully, oh, mulliganing to five. Okay, now I feel a little bit better. <laughs> I'm going to play a Windscarred Craig. Alright. Gains a life, sure. We draw a cast down, which is pretty good. Uh, we'll play an Insolent Neonate off our off our Mountain Goat here, so... Pass the turn. we has got an Ancient Dan. That is Nile Spellbomb. Okay, yeah, that's fair. We'll untap. Draw Duress. Well, we can rip that later. Uh, we can blow this up really at instant speed. We don't have to worry about it quite yet, so let's just go to combat. We'll attack. Weird that they would play Spellbomb in this deck with uh, it wanting black mana to draw the card. I just find, personally, that Relic of Progenitus is just strictly better than uh, Nile Spellbomb, but that's just me. Um, yeah, let's pass the turn. We can leave this open in case we need to braid anything, and then we can uh, end a turn, cycle the Ash Barons. This opponent plays a Great Furnace, okay. It'd be, it would be kind of fun to blow up a land, but uh, I think we need to be more worried about the Spell Bomb. Opponent has Prophetic Prism, okay, so that's a redraw for him, for sure. In turn, we will. Basic land cycle, the Lash Barons. Get ourselves a Black Source. Draw a Hand of Emrakul, okay. Well, let's go Swamp. Let's go Duress. Let's actually see what our opponent's working with. Okay, they have Cast and... Ooh, they're siding in black. Interesting. That makes sense. Okay, now with the Nile Spy Bomb. Okay. Uh, but we'll rip Cast down. So if we shut off Prism, they can't Thorn. But we can just kill Thorn, and then Skyfisher isn't the worst threat out there, so... Okay. Let's attack. For one. Uh, past turn, we can hold open our Braid still. Point is a land short of playing Thorn. Uh, okay, Golden Egg, sure. Another Fixer, another draw. So now blowing up Prism uh, gets less less good because they have a redundant effect here. So okay, uh, I don't think we blow up Spell Bomb yet, do we? Or maybe now's the time. Let's let's blow up Spell Bomb. Just in case we hit the Exhume this turn. Yeah, they're gonna do it. So we lose our Barons and Duress, but that's okay. Let's see what we draw. Simeon Spear Guide. Interesting. Not quite what we're looking for. Uh, let's go to combat. Let's get him for one. And let's actually just run out a Stinkweed Imp. It's gonna be Skyfisher. It is Skyfisher, okay. Are you gonna pick up a, one of these for a redraw? Looks like it, yeah. Picks up the golden egg. Opponent is drawing cards, so that's that's something to be said about uh, about deck opponents playing. They they mulligan down and they've uh, kept their hand pretty healthy here. Picks up with Boros Garrison. Right, let's draw an exhume this time. We draw Dragon Breath. Ugh. We're getting close. We need a discard outlet and an exhum. Um, well, we go to combat. Get in for one with the Neonate. Guess we just pass the turn. We gotta hold open this uh, this cast down for the time being. Is this a bolt? Gal Blast on Imp. Uh, yeah, I mean, that happens. It's great for us. Golden Egg, alright. Lone Missionary, sure. Pony gains four life. Pony tax for two. We'll take it. No flying right now. And uh, we can't dredge here. We need to draw an Exhume or something similar. We draw Bloodfell Caves. Not exactly what we were looking for. Um. We're just too far behind now. I don't. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. 
If they can play a thorn, duh, but that still makes it... We'll get four here on the crackback, so now, yeah, we just got to, uh, it's past turn like that. That's unfortunate. But, yep. Thorn coming down. Sure. And draws another card with the Monarch. Torn here. We could either grab a Stinkweed Imp, which gets us out of a little bit of the situation here. We can try to take back Monarch next turn. Or we can try to draw a card and hit our Exhum. Or at least a discard outlet. Uh, I think we'll try to draw. Shred Memory. That helps us tutor an Exhum. So that is something. So let's transmute. I'm going to assume. Let's attack. And blocks and blocks. Oh, that was dumb. No, we should have left it back to block and then done it then, but... Okay. We got a little bit too greedy for no reason there. Yeah, that's going to put us back a little bit, but that's okay. We'll discard and Ulamog's Crusher. Drug Gurmag Angler, okay. Um, oh, Thorn. We probably should have killed Thorn instead, too, with the Death Touch. Uh, we might have we might have made a few playline mistakes here. That are kind of costing us now. Plus Great Furnace. Guardian of the Guild Pact. Okay, well. Willemog's Crusher is no color, so... It doesn't really work that way. Thraven Inspector, and... Oh, yeah, we might be... Uh, a little bit too far behind, but let's... I don't know. I don't know if it's worth playing out at this point. Like, I, I'm honestly unsure. Opponent gets in for three. That's fine. They draw because of Monarch. Okay. Let's just draw. Draw a Braid. Okay, well, that's something. That's... Oh, they're gonna get back? Core Skyfisher, though. That's unfortunate. Ugh. Well, let's exhume. We'll grab Ulamog's Crusher. We could give it haste and make him sack some stuff. Or we could just go ahead and abrade the thorn now. Actually, I think we cast Gurmag Angler here. It seems just safer overall. And we can still abrade uh, with Simeon Spirit Guide in hand. So yeah, I think that's just I think that's just safer overall. This blocks doesn't block Guardian, but blocks Lone Missionary. Uh, this blocks Guardian. Oh, is this a Galblast? Blast? That's not gonna do it. Okay, they're gonna crack the clue. That makes sense. Journey to nowhere. That sucks. Grabs Ulamog's Crusher, sure. Driving Heath, pulling it. Uh, okay. Now we might be too far out of this one. We're gonna take one, two, three, four, five this turn. Another core sky fisher. Yeah, I think we just scoop this out. Let's go to game three. We need to be faster than this, so. Okay, let's run it back. No no boarding. We need to be faster. That's unfortunate, because uh, I think our hand was okay, and opponent... Uh, we'll play first. Opponent could have... Uh, okay, we have the Exhum. We have a Stinkweed Imp. We only have one land. Yeah, let's see what happens. Will work out. Let's see. Bloodfell Caves. Gain a life. Pass turn. One plays Mountain. Alright, and they pass. Oh, we draw the mountain. Okay, we got lucky. Uh, let's Faithless Looting. We'll discard Stinkry Damp and Stinkry Damp. Pass the turn. Oh, we should duress there, but we can do it next turn. Oh no, we should have done it last turn. Ugh, 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 ugh. 
making some some poor plays here, getting distracted. Uh, we will dredge. Uh, we don't have what we're looking for, so. Let's just duress ya. Uh, we'll grab Gal Blast. That gets a little worse later on, so. Best turn. Clint Hawk, sure. Picks up their ancient den. I'm gonna pass, okay? We will dredge. Still no luck, so cathartic reunion, discarding stinkweed amp, stinkweed amp, dredge. Wow, still nothing. Let's dredge. Okay, we got a crusher now. We'll pass the turn. We can crush her next turn. They don't have a journey as far as we know, but I mean, they do have two cards you don't know about now, so. Is Ancient Den? Sure. Home tax for two, sure. Down 19. Draw to rest. Is it worth taking another peek before we, we go for it? Or do we just go for it? We could get punished. Let's just go for it. Risk it to take the biscuit. Grab a crusher. We do get to give it haste. And we'll attack for eight. Annihilator two on the stack. And we got there. Woo, sweet. Nice. Reanimator. Lulamox Crusher. What a card. What a card. All right. Punting in Popper with some Rakdos Reanimator. And uh, we got a lot of lands here. Simeon Spirit Guide is essentially a land. We do get some redraws. We can chuck a Stinkweed Imp and one of these lands to the garbage with Cathartic Reunion. Uh, I think we'll keep it and see what happens here. Don't play Dismal Blackwater. Okay. Draw Neonate. Well, that's a turn one play at least, so we'll mount a Neonate. Pass turn. This one has Radiant Fountain. Okay. Looking to gain some life. And Cycles and Ash Barons. Okay. We can draw another Mountain, so let's go ahead. Play our Swamp. Let's Cathartic Reunion. Uh, actually. We should go to combat first. We will attack with Insolent Neonate. Now we'll cast Cathartic Reunion, discarding Stinkweed Imp and this Mountain. We will not dredge. We had a Faithless Looting, Tormenting Voice, okay. Something. Let's... Ca let's exile our Simeon Spirit Guide and Faithless Looting here. Get a little bit deeper. No dredge. Okay, Crusher, and Stinkweed Imp, okay. So we will discard Crusher, and another Stinkweed Imp. So now we just need to hit an Exhume here. Alright, not bad, not bad, we're getting there. His Island. Phase 3 mana for Curse of the Bloody Tome, what? Champ player at the beginning, that player mills two cards. Okay, well we don't hate things in our graveyard. Uh, we do need to hit an exhume or uh, at least a shred memory to find one at this point, though. So Okay, so is this mill or is this curses? So we mill two. Ooh, we milled an exhume, of course. Uh, we will not. We just draw. Okay. Draw a mountain. Let's... Tormenting voice. Discard mountain and... So hopefully we can hit an exhume here. Bloodfell Caves and Hand of Emrakul. Okay. Get him for one. Pass the turn. 
Yeah, we had an exhume right there. We would have hit it. That stinks. Looks like they're just going to pass the turn. Makes me a little bit worried they might have some uh, counter magic up. Let's see what we mill. Shred memory and blood fell caves. Okay, well, let's draw. Hit Gurmag Angler. At least it's a playable. Uh, let's play blood fell caves. Gain of life. Let's go to combat. Attack with Neonate. And let's Faithless Looting. Flashback from the yard. No dredge, no dredge. Okay, so we had another Faithless Looting. Let's discard Hand of Emrakul and one of the cast downs. Pass like that. We can Faithless Looting and Gurmag next turn if we have to. Opponent's going to mystical teachings. Okay. What are they going to find? Diabolic Edict. Okay. i place Pristine Talisman. Okay. Demir Aqueduct. Bouncing Radiant Fountain. Makes sense. Alright, on our upkeep, we mill two. We mill another Exhume. No, and a Cathartic Reunion. Okay, well, let's draw a card. Another Insolent Neonate. Let's Faithless Looting. No dredge, no dredge. We hit a mountain and a duress. Ugh. Um, let's discard Neonate. And... The Jukebug. Duress our opponent. See what else they have going on in there. Alright, I see. Well, I think we have to rip the Justice here. Only makes sense. Uh, player Mountain. Attack with our Neonate. And then let's just cast Gurmag Angler. We need to raise, raise up our clock here a little bit. An Edict currently only makes us really get rid of Neonate, so that's fine. So I'm just going to gain a life off the Talisman, sure. Plays the Fountain, gains two life. Plays Chainer's Edict. Okay, getting rid of both of our cards. Yeah, we'll sacrifice the Neonate. I assume Diabolic Edict comes down now. They could wait, it is instant speed, so. Alright, we mill two. Oh no, another Exhum. Okay, we're drawn to the Gurmag Angler, which is something at least. Let's flashback a looting. No dredge, no dredge. We got Dragon's Breath and Bloodfell Caves. Well, we'll discard Dragon Breath and cast down. We'll play the Bloodfell Caves. We just want to have enough mana to hard cast an Eldrazi now if we get to that point. Um, let's pay black and red. Cast Gurmag Angler. They might Edict now. They do. Okay. Yep, we'll sack this Gurmag Angler. And drop that one. Um, no, we need to keep that Dragon Breath in the yard for if, if, uh, an Eldrazi comes back, I think, so we'll leave that where it is. We will pass the turn. Opponent's got a pretty good hold of us right now. They do only have two cards in hand, though, luckily. Three now with draw. I'm pretty sure one's an island. Opponent's going to think twice, draws another card. And that has flashback, so that's good for them. I'm just going to flash back, think twice. They pass, okay. Well, we're going to mill two. Just swamp and a duress, so okay, we have a chance to draw it. Draw Faithless Looting. That isn't going to help us, because we're just going to go up the two cards, and then we'll have to put them in our graveyard. So we have to wait another turn, um, but we'll go to combat. And attack with our Gurmag. Yeah, we only have one more Exhume left in deck. 
That is unfortunate. And we do want to try to get Dragon Breath on at least one creature so that we can pump, uh, give it Fire Breathing, and we can add more damage and at least uh, try to race opponent in here. So, Yeah, we'll pass turn. Should have maybe Dragon Breath on this Gurmag Angler in hindsight then, but... Opponent three cards in hand. Going to cast Teachings with Flashback. Grabs another Diabolic Edict, okay. So we mill two. Mountain and a Swamp, so no dredge. We draw a Swamp. Well, Faithless Looting. Come on, Exhume. No dredge. Shred Memory. Ulamog's Crusher. Okay, so we discard Swamp Crusher. We black, black, red. Transmute Shred Memory. Get our last Exhume. Cast Exhume. Get back an Ulamog's Crusher. Attach Dragon Breath to it. Attack for 14, Annihilator 2. <laughs> I don't know if Annihilator 2 is enough to slow down our opponent, but uh, they're going to have to have some removal. They have the, the Diabolic Edict, but they don't have the mana for it this turn. We are getting close to milling out. One does a Swamp and an Island shirt. Yeah, it doesn't set them back too much, but they do go down to uh, seven, so they have to kill this Crusher this turn, or else we, we just get there. It's the Diabolic Edict. Well, we will get rid of our Gurmag Angler. One plays an Island. Three Unknown in hand. Oh no. Pristine Talisman, okay. It's not enough. Okay, opponent passes. Do they maybe not know what Dragon Breath does? Uh, we mail Ash Barons in a Swamp. Okay, well, we will draw for turn. We draw Hand of Emrakul. Let's go to combat. Stack Swamp and Radiant Fountain. Okay. Well, Fire Breathing. Fire Breathing. Fire Breathing. Just in case I can gain some more life here. I don't know, opponent hasn't scooped yet, so maybe we're just <laughs> playing into their hand. Deck like that. Okay, we got there. Wow, I thought we had no chance of winning that game. Wow, okay, let's go to sideboards. Right, so opponent's playing a reasonably creatureless deck by the looks of it. They might have some in sideboards, so we're going to bring in some abrades. Uh, hopefully take care of any creatures, and uh, we can destroy the Pristine Talismans and stuff like that. And uh, then Red Elemental Blast for the blue stuff they got going on. We're going to go down our two Simeon Spirit Guides, a Stinkweed Imp, and two Cast Downs, because again, removal doesn't seem like uh, the primary thing uh, we need in this deck. So yeah, let's run it like that. Alright, this hand has potential, so I think we'll hold on to it. Opponent plays Dismal Blackwater. For sure, gain a life. We draw a Tormenting Voice. Well, let's play Mountain. Let's Faithless Looting. Let's discard Stinkweed Imp and hmm, probably Tormenting Voice. Relic of Progenitus, sure. We will exile the Tormenting Voice. Let's dredge, fill up the yard a bit. Ooh. So we got everything we're looking for, but opponent's gonna crack Relic, but we kind of want them to crack it sooner than later, right? Um, oh, but they're tapped out! Yeah! Oh, we're short of mana. Simeon Spear Guy would come in handy here. Um, yeah, I guess we just have to go for Gurmag. Unless we can hit land and Exhume off this Faithless Looting. So that's Faithless Looting. We do hit Exhume. We do hit a land. Wow, 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 wow. So we discard Stinkweed Imp and Red Elemental Blast. Oh, but it's turn two. Dang it. Oh, we almost had it. We almost had it. Okay. Well, let's cast Gurmag Angler. Shoot. So close. So close. One, 
two, three, four. Faithless looting. Faithless looting. We will put the Dragon Breath on our Gourmet Angler. Darn, I thought we had another land drop this turn. That would have made... Oh, that would have made all the difference in the world. But Okay, we'll get in for five. We have more Eldrazi in the deck, so that's fine. And we can still exhume it next turn if opponent doesn't, uh, doesn't pay to crack the Relic. Opponent Dimir Aqueducts. Oh! Oh no, they're still going to do this. Okay. Let's say, wow. Okay, so opponent cracks. They get to draw. We lose our two, but... I mean, we're still in a reasonable position here. We draw a bug, so we will... Cathartic Reunion. Discard Mountain and Bajookabog. Okay. Let's play Bloodfell Caves. Go to combat. Get in for five. Put him down to 11. Put him plays an island. And passes. Okay, well, we draw another exhume. Let's go to combat. Let's attack for five. We will pump. And pump. Extend our clock a little bit. Put them down to four. Play a swamp. Pass the turn, and opponent has to take care of Gurmag Angler here. Uh, we can't exhume it next turn, so. We did tap out not leaving Red Elemental Blast open, but I mean, this does force our opponent to kind of make a play. They do have eight cards in hand, three mana. Oh, we got there, yes! So, we didn't get to pull off the uh, the original combo, but uh, yeah, we still got there. The Gurmeg Angler, hasty 5-5 hasty five five does it. Who would have thought? <laughs> All right. All right, so how did we do this week? Punting and popper with some Rakdos Reanimator. And I gotta say, the deck was pretty darn good. Um, and, and number one, it's a whole lot of fun to play. Um, getting out those quick, quick threats like that, uh, nothing compares to the feeling of just putting your opponent into that situation where they look at your crusher and they're like, well, uh, I, I guess I'm done. <laughs> so um, the deck is really, really, really good when we have the, the correct opening hand and, and when all the pieces fall together. And I, I would argue that this deck might have some of the best nut draws in the format. Um, if everything goes our way, there's not much that can stop us. But with that being said, I don't think the deck has a whole lot of legs in the late game. So if we can't quite uh, do a quick reanimation or anything like that, or even maybe even give our Crusher or Hand of Emrakul haste, um, there is removal in the format that will uh, take care of it, such as Cast Down or Echoing Truth or anything like that. And those can really slow us down and then kind of put us in a position where we can't really recover from, unfortunately. But uh, anyways, game one, we played uh, what appeared to be a, a, a Boros deck, but uh, as they kind of sided in, they, they ended up being a Mardu list, which was really, really cool. I thought that was uh, very interesting how opponent uh, sided in the black like that and was able to use their, their prisms to uh, find that black mana. So I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was really, really cool. But uh, game one, I definitely did some bad sequencing. Uh, we probably should have exhumed before we killed uh, opponent's creature, so they were able to get that one back. But um, even then, we still came out on top on that one. So that was that was a nice showing. Uh, but then game two, despite the mulligan, opponent's deck was able to generate a lot of card advantage, and we were just too slow. Opponent mulligan down to five cards, and uh, they were just able to get some redraws, they were able to get a lot of value, and um, opponent's deck... In, in general, was able to create a lot of uh, permanents on the battlefield that when a Crusher or a Hand 
were were swinging in the the annihilator really didn't do a whole lot they they had permanents to sacrifice without really setting themselves too far back so we did lose that one but that's okay because game three <laughs> was pretty much the perfect example uh, of you know the hasty crusher coming down putting the opponent into a position where they can't really come back from it and then they just scoop it up which is you know the point that's what we're trying to do so very good showing against the the boral slash mardu deck so very happy with that and then up against mill in game two uh, game one we potentially should have played the the Gurmag angler a little bit earlier you know kind of uh, force opponent into a position where they're losing a lot of life. They were playing a very creatureless uh, mill mill formula, so um, it was a very cool deck opponent had. I, I'd never seen the curse before, and and we did come pretty close to milling out in in game one. But uh, in the end, we did have you know big enough threats to to put opponent into a bad position and, and win that one. And then game two again was almost perfect. We didn't have an Eldrazi, but we did have an early angler that uh, pressured our opponent quite well. Um, we got a little bit sloppy near the end of there. He kind of tapped some mana we shouldn't have. Uh, could have only uh, paid one fire breathing on the one attack, and then we still would have had opponent within uh, one turn attack, and we could have uh, held open our red elemental blast or even right on a stinky imp. But that's okay. We got lucky, <laughs> and, and we took both games. So I did test this deck out a lot um, while recording, and and like I said, it's very good early on if you can get the nut draw uh loses his legs in the late game against a lot of matchups um just a sidebar i did beat mono white heroic um so that was impressive heroic is a, is a tier deck for sure um there were some fairy decks out there that i played against and uh if again the nut draw was good we we could beat them uh and then red elemental blast in the sideboard does do a lot of work for us in that matchup so fairy decks were kind of a 50 50 i i could beat them sometimes and, and other times i couldn't so uh is this deck tier level uh i don't know i don't know if it's consistent enough that i would want to take it into a league or anything like that but as far as just like a good fun cheap this deck is pretty cheap uh deck that you just want to you know get some games in i think this one's great i would highly recommend it i know there's a lot of different variants of this reanimator too uh, i did play against a jund uh, three color so that's a uh, green red black uh reanimator variant uh, i did beat them and then uh also played we played the dimir uh reanimator list last week which is what inspired me to want to play this this week and uh that deck we kind of beat but we were also on a fairly fairly quick beat down deck when we were playing them so yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Maybe try out some, some different colors. See if there's something else. Uh, would you recommend anything different for this deck? Is there better Eldrazi we could be playing? Is there, you know, quicker quicker ways to get our creatures out? Is Simeon Spirit Guide worth playing in the deck? I don't know if it is currently. Maybe just some extra removal in that slot's a little bit better. Maybe we should just be main decking REBs just in case that game one is up against a blue deck. I'm not sure. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I gotta say, a Braid uh, coming as a downship from Double Masters is really good, and so is Cast Down. They're really having an impact on the format, and uh, I really enjoy both of them being available to us, especially in these colors. So, with all that being said, I just want to thank you all for joining me here on Punching and Popper, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.